Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 226. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have Jamo James, a coach, professionals and business entrepreneurs, also known as the digital currency guy. His mission is to build communities of people national wide who wants to make changes in their lives. Hello Jamo. Hello. Hey, th- how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm all right. I know the clan is anxious to hear your story. So let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your online business? Take us right up to the last job or business before you are online. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I actually started my, my, my professional career. I was uh, in the Marine Corps and I got out of the uh, United States Marine Corps back in 1998. <laughs> so I'm aging myself a little bit. But, uh, you know, as a former uh, Marine, uh, I went to college for uh, computer science and I worked for a company um, a company called Allergan. And I was actually a, um, a developer slash CRM business, um, business manager. I managed their marketing. Um, I actually implemented programs called uh, customer relationship management systems, uh, which is uh, a brand extension of loyalty program. And it's really designed to uh, interact with the customers and get them to become lifetime customers. Um, that is what I did before I, I got into cryptocurrency and became a professional trader. Uh, I managed uh, communities. I managed customers for uh, Fortune 500 companies. So um, that is a little bit about my background as far as on the uh, business side. And, you know, I got into cryptocurrency uh, as a result of trading. You know, I, I was all I was always a, a part-time trader. I tried to day trade, um, and in 2016, I actually, uh, you know, I actually sold my company in 2015, uh, which was a CRM. I sold the marketing business, and I got into trading full-time, and I jumped into cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency is, you know, uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, digital currency, digital assets. Um, and the reason why I got into digital currency and cryptocurrency is as a, a manager, I wanted to be able to, you know, be free, be free from, uh, you know, the government, be free from the traditional finance. And cryptocurrency is actually is all about community. It's about, um, you know, guys that uh, want an alternative to the regular dollar or fiat. And it's really an idea, you know, it's an idea of freedom, uh, freedom away from the banks. So, you know, learning how to trade, it allowed me to go into these these cryptocurrency communities. And since then, I've been able to build a business online uh, through community, teaching other people how to trade, uh, how to live a laptop lifestyle where they're able to trade from anywhere in the world. Uh, so it's really a global currency. And I'm sure that, um, you know, I can tell you guys more about that, but I don't want to run off too far patience without giving you an opportunity. <laughs> Can you really anyone who go uh, out there online and really master this uh, digital currency trading or is it for genius people like you? Oh, you have to be, <laughs> right. I don't no, want to do it. Yeah, no, no, actually it's the opposite because um, mm. the thing is that, you know, the society in, in society is changing. You know, I have a two year old daughter that, you know, she picks up a mobile phone um, the, the thing with cryptocurrency and, and Bitcoin is that anyone that has a mobile phone, it's no different than having a, um, you know, a, a app on your phone where you basically have PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. You have apps that hold money. A cryptocurrency in Bitcoin is just it's just another form of currency. It's no different than having uh, dollars or pesos or, uh, you know, the pound or the euro. Um, and in Europe, you know, you have Euro and you have it uh, in a digital format. Anyone that has a mobile phone can go download a, a wallet, um, a app, and you can receive and send Bitcoin. So actually, less to, allows the world globally, you know, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, no matter where it, where it is in the world. So I can actually deal, 
and do business now with someone that's in China or someone that's in Colombia, someone that's in you know Africa, uh, in Nigeria. You know, we can actually send money directly, no middleman. We can we can send money from one mobile phone to the next, which you know saving on fees. So uh, the, you know, people think that there's a a big technology gap. It's really just exposure. If you have a mobile phone, uh, you should have cryptocurrency, and that is. You know, that is something that I'm passionate about uh, teaching people because it's not as difficult as people think uh, to actually trade cryptocurrency or to actually acquire it. Uh, we have we started a lot of new businesses off with accepting cryptocurrency. So it's like, well, how do you accept a crypt cryptocurrency? It's like if you downloaded a wallet and you have a um, a wallet address, a person can send you cryptocurrency right away. And there's a lot of pros for businesses and people that's online to take cryptocurrency because it's not a transaction that can be reversed. So if you're dealing with customers and, and they're, you know, across the world, you know, if they send you banking, you know, they can go and they can dispute the charge through Visa. Uh, but when you're dealing in cryptocurrency, it's peer to peer. It's a relationship between you and the other person, no middleman. And so that is the, that's the, that's one of the beauties of a cryptocurrency is that it's instant transactions Peer to peer, where there's no wait time, you can send money uh, from one person to the next. Doesn't matter what country they're in, you know. You all you have to do is download a mobile phone app, and you're able to start accepting cryptocurrency, and Ooh. and you have ownership. I think this is dangerous. Suppose I sent you like thousand cryptocurrency, and I said, "Oh, sorry, I've made a mistake. Can I have that money back?" You said, "I can't have it back." That is dangerous. No. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's dangerous because now it makes you responsible. Mm -hmm. It makes you responsible for managing your own money. It makes you responsible for sending your own money. And if you don't trust the vendor, then it basically it creates a trustless system where now it, it now is like, hey, well, do if I don't trust this guy, I'm not going to do business with him because if I send him money, then he may not send it back. But then it also has other use cases, right? Say you're in a village in, um, you know, Colombia, and you know you're you're three hours away from the market, and so you send, you know, you you living in a village. There's not a lot of roads. You have one guy that you send out, and he says, "Hey, you know what? We're gonna give you, we're gonna give you money, or we're not gonna give you money. We want you to drive down to the town to the market. We want you to collect, and once you get there, put the business, put the owner on the phone of the market, and I'm gonna send him crypto directly to him." So the, the guy drives three hours, you know, you don't give him the money there because he may he may decide if all the villagers, you know, collected the money and gave it to the driver. Mm -hmm. Well, sometime he may drive there. Sometime he may stop and get drunk. <laughs> he may get robbed. You are making me make picture it. my own village now. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> right. right. So, so he may not make it, right? He, he He's leaving the village and he stopped and, you know, he met a nice lady on the way and he said, you know what, maybe I'm not coming back to the village. I'm just mm -hmm. going to continue to go. And mm -hmm. he has all the village, the village, he has the money. Mm -hmm. So now the use case is, is that, hey, we send them out to the market. We tell them that, hey, you go to the market, you pick up the, the goods. When you get there, I call, I talk to the business owner and then I send them the money. You inspect the uh, cargo or whatever you're going to pick up. He says, hey, you know what, it's good. He calls back and says, hey, well, I'm here. I counted 20, uh, you know, barrels of grain, and now the guy says, "Okay, I'm going to pay the guy." He pays the guy. Now he drives back, and now he delivers. And then when he gets back, then he says, "Okay, now you can pay me." And so now you just you eliminated some of the risks that's associated with actually having to give a individual uh, funds, and now you're doing it peer to peer. So there is a verification, right? It's a confirmation. You. Send someone uh, funds and and you can wait and say hey, we'll do it cash on delivery or cryptocurrency on delivery. You deliver the product and I'll pay you right when it arrives to my door. I'm sorry, people in my village are going to lose some few jobs. All right, I better warn them next time when I go. Why do you do what you do? <laughs> um, so I mean, I do what I do because uh, you know, I, I grew up in the um, I grew up in Oakland, uh, in the Bay Area, San Francisco, uh, in California, which is really the inner city. And, uh, you know, for me, my parents, they had regular uh, middle class jobs where, you know, blue collar jobs where, you know, a trucker. My dad was a trucker. My mom was a she worked for the post office. She delivered mail for like 30, 40 years. And, you know, a lot of guys from the inner city, we don't get into finance. 
we don't get into money. You know, we are taught to save money. We're taught to put in banks. Uh, and we, we, we do a lot of hard work for our money. And then we go give it to someone else to manage. We give it to someone else to take care of and protect. And it's like, well, why don't we, why don't we do it ourselves? And so cryptocurrency was a vehicle that now, instead of giving the banks the money to, uh, you know, make money off of it every night, why don't we trade it and learn how to manage it ourselves and take care of our own money? And now we actually keep it. We don't give it to a bank. We don't get charged fees. And now we're able to keep our own funds and, you know, teach other people that, hey, you know, when I die or when I pass away, I can just pass you over my wealth. You know, I own this amount. It doesn't have to go through the probate. It doesn't have to go through uh, the state, you know, and and you are responsible now for your own. So me, I'm really passionate. Uh, you know, I was in the Marines, right? And the Marines is all about freedom. It's teaching people how to be free. And so, you know, if you want to be completely free, then it's like you have to own your own resources. You have to own your money. You have to own your your land. You have to own your property, right? And uh, one of the things that we never taught is we never taught how to own our own, for one, be entrepreneurs and then own our own money, you know, and now we're responsible. So, you know, I'm really passionate about teaching people how to make money from anywhere in the world. You know, you shouldn't have to go in. I mean, I seen my parents work and they worked 12, 15 hours, 16 hours. My, my dad, he was a trucker. He would leave for weeks at a time. It's like with cryptocurrency, you don't have to leave. You can work from anywhere in the world and you don't have to be in you know, physically going, you can work from behind a computer screen. So the online business is like, you know, with online business, you have products. Well, with trading in cryptocurrency, you have money. Money is your product. And now you can have money working for you. So I think people should learn that because even as a business owner, one of the things I didn't like is managing a lot of people. Well, now with trading cryptocurrency and just trading in general, you don't have to manage people. All you have to do is manage your finances. And it cuts out a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the stress. <laughs> the stress with dealing with other people. Say all of us, we are going to go into this digital currency. Uh, what will happen for the jobs? What will happen for my brothers and sisters? They will be left with no jobs. That's the idea. It's like, you know, you want to you go to the new training skills because, I mean, jobs means that someone else owns your time. And we're not taught about owning our own time and owning our own business. What's like if so if you work for a job, mm. you know, they determine how much you're worth, right? They say, Hey, we're gonna pay you this for doing for doing that. Well, how much are they you know, you're selling your time for money. And so how much is that how much are you worth? You know, the online business world is like, hey, now instead of you selling your time for money and doing something for them, they're gonna pay you. How about you start your own? How about you take your own independence and, and the same thing that you're doing for them, maybe you do it for yourself. And now you say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna make an offer and I'm gonna offer you this to and then now I start my own business. Do we really all have a talent to really get there and learn this? Because uh, the reason I said my brother and my sister they are going to lose their job because they we we all can't be good at the one thing. Or well, one has to be good at cleaning the house, one has to be good at cooking, another one has to be good at knowing shopping. So right. my worry is, are we all going to be cut out for it to really, really go there and learn and master this digital currency? What is your advice? Yeah, so I think businesses are already cutting out a lot of the mm -hmm. jobs for technology. You know, so the thing is that a lot of people, even in California or in the United States, they're, they're becoming independent contractors. They're doing a lot of freelance work. And so, you know, instead of waiting for someone to, to fire you, um, you know, you want to start offering your services. And when you're offering your services, maybe maybe they're willing to pay $100 in, you know, say U.S. dollars. Well, if you offered it at $90 and they paid you Bitcoin or they paid you cryptocurrency, then it's going to force guys to, you know, they're going to start looking at it like, well, why do, why, why do these people want cryptocurrency? Why do they want Bitcoin? And the reason why you won't want Bitcoin is because even if you accept $100 and you put it into the bank, you know, you never really truly own it. If the banks don't allow you to have your money or the banks charge you a fee, what can you do? You have to just pay the fee. You, you have to just comply. You know, and now if you had the cryptocurrency yourself, now you're responsible for keeping it. And now there's there's a little bit of freedom associated with not 
working for a company and also working for yourself. That's a that's a lot of uh, that is empowerment, and I think people should feel empowered and be empowered. Let's put the man aside. How do you know you are successful? Um, so I mean, how I determine success is freedom, and and do I own my time? So when no one is telling you what time you have to be somewhere and you're able to take care of your family, I have a wife and two kids that, you know, my wife doesn't work. She hasn't worked and, and, you know, she doesn't work at a job for someone else. She works for our family and our, and my kids, you know, they're free to be whatever they want. So that's how I determine success is do I have the freedom and do I have the time and do I own that? And so um, back in 2015, 2016, I bought cryptocurrency I bought Bitcoin. It was like, you know, uh, $200, $300 a Bitcoin. It went all the way up to 20000 in 2017. And so, you know, having buying something so low and actually able to sell it, you know, you're able to accumulate a lot of wealth um, in a short amount of time uh, based on the market of the market value of Bitcoin at different times and uh, within the last two or three years. So it's still a growing asset class. Um, And so I determine success by do you love what you do? Uh, Are you free to do it? And do you own your own time? That is how I determine success. What have you learned from business as a whole? I learned that, you know, we have been programmed uh, and we have been trained to do things uh, as a job instead of taking initiative and exploring new opportunities, we create the demand for products and we create uh, the opportunities is out there. So one of the things about businesses is, is that, you know, there is a certain model, but everything evolves. We started off with a car that maybe went, you know, uh, top speed with 40 miles per hour. Then it went to 50. Then it went to 60. Now we have race cars doing 200 miles per hour. So you you know, as a business owner, you always have to take chances to, to, to go further because there's really no limit. We create our reality. And so I teach a lot on mindset. Uh, you know, the mindset is, you know, you can be as free or trapped as you want to be. If you want to be free, you open your mind. If you want to be trapped, you stay in the same place. So as a business owner, you know, you never want to feel trapped. Where do you see cryptocurrency going in the next 10 years? Uh, I see more mass adoption. You know, cryptocurrency started, and when it first came out, it was only techies and guys that were in technology that was involved. Then you had guys on the, uh, you know, you had the government send it. There is a lot of, you know, uh, black market guys using cryptocurrency, and that's really just not the case. You know, there's more money being laundered uh, in the U.S. dollar than any other currency out there. Um, I see in the next 10 years, I see an entire world going towards digital currency. I see everyone using money off their phone. I don't think we're going to see paper bills in the next 10 years. Um, in the te- next 10 years, cryptocurrency will be one version of currency. Uh, I think the governments will have, you know, mostly our, our currency right now is all digital. You know, we're already moving into a cashless society today. You know, when you see our kids growing up with PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, uh, all these electronic forms of payment, that is a digital, a virtual world. In virtual currency. So in the next 10 years, I think we'll have more mass adoption. All our kids right now that are five, six years old, 10 years old, they're all using mobile phones and they're all are, are familiar with sending money through a phone. So I think in the future, in the next 10 years, we will see less cash, less coins, and we'll see more, uh, 70, 80% more. So I think there's a huge growth, um, spurt coming for a digital currency globally what are some of the biggest myths you hear about to cryptocurrency uh, some of the biggest uh misconceptions is that you know it's a thing that people are using that are trying to mo- launder money uh you can't launder money through cryptocurrency because each place you send it to it keeps a digital wallet there's you know there's nothing uh it can all be traced you know, when you when you are talking about traceability, mm-hmm. all cryptocurrencies can be traced because it, it all goes from one place to the next. So it never um, it, it can't be stolen without you finding it. You can actually track it back 
one of the biggest holders of cryptocurrency is the uh, FBI and CIA because they've compensated so much cryptocurrency from guys trying to steal it. Uh, another misconception is that um, you know you can't have fraudulent cryptocurrency. There's only one Bitcoin, and there's not there's not um, a lot of fraud fraudulent transactions. People lose their Bitcoin by not keeping their wallet secure, or there's people trying to steal Bitcoin. But you can't. There's no fraudulent Bitcoin being there. There's no scams. It's only people that are scamming people. It's not the actual technology. The technology works. There's never been a case of a cryptocurrency, um, you know, a Bitcoin, say counterfeit. It doesn't exist. <laughs> wow. Uh, do you have a mentor in your business or a coach? I've had guys that I've learned from and in trading, and I've I've become a coach in cryptocurrency. But there's always more to learn. So we're constantly in my community. We're constantly teaching each other, um, you know, and bringing more things. And that's in cryptocurrency. The community is the most important thing to have, is because there's there's so the industry is so big, and you want to be around other people that are involved in it as well. Most people. They sit on the island by themselves and, you know, there's coaches that everyone needs a coach. And at some point I have a business coach. I don't have a cryptocurrency coach, but I do have a business coach. And my business coach, you know, helps me see things that maybe I don't see um, in my business. What is the most valuable thing your business coach has told you? Uh, the most valuable thing my business coach has told me is to diversify and also create processes for people to follow so you don't have a lot of duplication um you know there's a lot of uh time that business owners they they just start running around and they're doing the business and they never plan out how their business should be ran and sometimes going from a small business to a large business is the most difficult thing to do because you're doing things that was built for a small business and now you're growing so uh, putting procedures in place uh to scale is probably one of the uh, most important lessons I've learned because you you don't want to become a self-employed business operator. You want to expand and you know be able to have more of your time back. Uh, when is it the right time to start the digital currency? As soon as possible. There's never a wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Shall if we wait like, in the next two years? Uh, you you want to get in. You you want to understand it because uh, hmm. it creates a lot more opportunity for you. You know, the guys that are first adopters and people that embrace the cryptocurrency, um, you know, there's more and more people getting involved. You don't want to be the last one to the party. You know, you want to be one of the early adopters that can actually build businesses and offer services based on the knowledge that you gain. So even if you're not in the business, you still want to be knowledgeable of the business so you can actually adjust and, and, and be one of the leaders in this industry. What is one thing no one knows about you? I'm a very spiritual person. Uh, I've been in a car crash, a plane crash. Uh, I've been in a motorcycle crash. And, you know, I, I really believe like we're here for a reason. And so through our experiences, you know, I think it's something greater than just ourselves. And I think, um, you know, I believe like we are, we're all connected. Uh, we're, we're all people connected all over the world. You know, it's like one big mind and we're just on different channels but we're all together. Wow, <laughs> you are special, it looks like. What grounds you? My my kids, my 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 two daughters grounds me, right? It, it lets me know that, you know, there's only a limited amount of time that we have here. And, you know, seeing, seeing having relatives that are passed away, we know our time in this physical body is limited. So the experiences that we have, uh, seeing our kids be able to grow you know that that grounds me. It knows that we're not as uh, we're, we're not as uh, we're not going to be here as long as we think. Let's talk about your business. Tell us about your digital currency membership. So um, I have two memberships. I have one. It's called DigitalCurrencyGuide.tv. Uh, it's over 200, 300 trading videos and and courses that I have online, which people can uh, go to DigitalCurrencyGuide.tv uh, and you can sign up for a membership. Uh, the membership is uh, eight U.S. dollars. is really cheap, um, 
And then I have a personal coaching program where I basically work with guys one-on-one. And you can see that on digitalcurrencyguy.com. The program and the community for that, that is really what makes it. We're basically a membership based on community online. I have guys everywhere in Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and we have our own a community that we teach trading. We teach you guys how to get in crypto, how to get out. We have online courses, uh, but then we also have daily calls. We have uh, two calls a day, five days a week. So you're never alone. You're always, um, you know, you're always involved and have opportunity to get your questions answered. And I have professional traders that actually take some of these calls and host these calls at the same time, every day, every week. And we've been the same way for the last two years. The two calls, is it part of the one-on-one training course? That's, yeah, that's part of the one-on-one training. Yeah, that, that happens with the one-on-one training. You get one call with me, and mm-hmm. then you get five group calls a week. But what level do you have to be in your one-to-one coaching? Yeah, so uh, we have a 90-day program that mm-hmm. you need to go into the 90-day program first, and then from there you go into the year program. So we, we kind of give you levels. Uh, the first level is you can come in on a, a trial basis, which is uh, 150 bucks a month, and it gives, it gives you access as a trial. And then from that point, you can join in to one of the 90-day programs or the, the 12-month program, depending on how serious you are about being free and learning how to trade. We all want freedom, but we just want to make sure we are grasping it at right. the right time or the right moment. That's all. So... Mm. so you know, people say they want freedom, but then mm-hmm. they're not willing to sacrifice anything for it. They're not willing to put the effort in. They're not willing to, um, you know, change their schedule. You know, they're not willing to do anything. So in cryptocurrency, it's the idea of freedom. You embrace that first. And then, you know, I had a guy that he was a, he was a, uh, he worked at a prison. And he says, hey, Jamar, you know, I want to join your group. You know, I'm just looking for freedom. And I told him, you know, like, you're looking for freedom, you're in a prison and, you know, all these guys that are locked up, they've been there for three, five, ten years. You can walk out anytime you want. So you can have freedom whenever you declare that, hey, I want freedom. You can take a day off. You can train. So for a lot of guys, when I tell them that, you know, you come into the group and here's the calls to make, they're like, I don't have time. And it's like, if you don't control your time, then how are you going to control your freedom? And so you can say that, you know what? I don't desire I don't have the desire to get freedom because if you want it, you can have it. And so that is the first step is teaching guys about mindset, about time management. And then we teach them the strategy because 95% of success is mindset. It's only 5% is strategy. So it's based on how you view the world and how you view your time and how you view your life. Maybe because you, you are an ex-Marine. That's why you are really being tough on us that we don't want freedom. That's why you are viewing it that way. But honestly, no. Jamal, we want freedom. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but that's, yes. I mean, you can't say you want freedom and a job at the same time. No, you have to choose one. Or while you have a job, you have to be building a life mm-hmm. that you have to be doing something that you can control. Give us three tips that we can really do our job while we move on to uh, freedom. Right. So you have a job right now and mm-hmm. you have a certain amount of hours. You have yes. you know, maybe eight hours you work at your job or maybe 10. And, twelve. All right. Maybe 12 hours now. Right. Mm-hmm. You work 12 hours at that job. Now you have to say, look, I need two hours or one hour. What do I really love to do? Step one is first identifying what do you really love to do? And if you can't determine what you love to do, then that is the first step. Find out what you really love to do. Get really good at it is step two. And then step three is offer to do it for free for someone. And once you do it for free for someone, you're giving. And the universe gives back to you. So when you give, you're actually circulating. And so once you really have a passion, you become an expert, then you give that away to someone. Eventually, you'll have a demand that people want it. And then they'll actually offer you to pay for it. But that's going to require you to be committed to doing something you really love. Where can we find your membership program and how can we connect with you? So you can connect with me. I'm on Facebook, but uh, I'm also, I am also believe in my own um, assets. So if you go to Digital Currency Guy, uh, www.digitalcurrencyguy.tv, 
uh, you can you can actually register for my online training. You'll find me there. And then if you want uh, personal coaching, you can go to digitalcurrencyguy.com and uh, you'll find me online there. But as far as on Facebook, you'll find me at Jamar James. If you type in Jamar James, I'll come up globally everywhere. So, Glenn, there will be more from Jamal in a moment. If you are listening on one of the many podcasting platforms rather than my website and you are encouraged by Jamal's journey, go to onlinesuccessjourney.com for a bonus portion of the interview. The Online Success Journey is a wonderful membership community built for people searching for the path to success. We are one big clan and you can be part of this community for free. Once you have joined the clan, click on part two of Jamel's journey or over 200 plus and other journeys that are available and learn to find the right path for your own online success journey. That's a wrap, clan. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Jamal. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey Clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast, and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessJourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form, by clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube, or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on Ratings and Reviews, then write a review. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.